Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna do a little review, but I'm also gonna tell you where I've been. Technically, I'm not gonna tell you where I've been because I can't tell you where I've been. I've been working on a project that's really big. It was a huge, huge opportunity for me. And eventually I'll be able to say uh, when it's announced, but right now I can't. So I have been gone for, gosh, eight weeks total. Uh, six weeks was actually working on the project. I've actually been back a few weeks. I've just been lazy getting to the videos. There's something I got before I left and I was gonna use to celebrate the project being complete. And um, I haven't yet. And I figured the video with you guys would be a good place to do it. So I ordered some Penzance that was actually from 314. So it's been aged pretty well. I haven't opened it yet. I could have very easily been scammed and I open it and it's like pencil shavings. But hopefully I didn't, and hopefully this is good. It's been aged well. It's got the little nice crystals on it. But with this tobacco, in a celebratory fashion, I smoke cigars rarely, but I know cigars are kind of the celebratory tobacco of choice. I'd rather do it in a pipe, so why not get a pipe that is a cigar? So this is the Morgan Pipes Briar Cigar. This one has the white tip. From what I understand, the white tip is for royalty and highfalutin people in other countries. That's why he does the white tip. I'm neither of those. I just thought it was cool looking. It's got the little screw on cap here uh, where you can take it, smoke your tobacco, and instead of sticking a cigar in your pocket, which I actually know people who have done that to save it for later, or sticking a pipe in your pocket, which I know people that have done that too, you can just cap it off. You don't have to worry about any ashes or burnt tobacco or tobacco in general falling out in your pocket, which makes this really, really cool. The weight is like the weight of a cigar. It's really, really light. I haven't got anything in there yet, but just to show you, I mean, I can easily clench it, it's fine. I can hold it like a cigar, it feels really light. It actually feels a little bit lighter than some cigars I've smoked. But <laughs> let's crack open this tin of Penzance, which has been my favorite and I haven't had any since that batch I got you know, last year sometime, and uh, see how the thing smokes. All right, so it seems like it was properly vacuum packed. Only thing that was scaring me is I'd never seen the square Penzance. I usually see the longer ones or in the bag. Holy cow. Oh, it's got the right smell. Let's see if it's got the right look. Oh yeah. I don't see any little crystals or anything, but that may have been, nope, yeah, I do. There's some in there also known as mold. Okay, I hope it's not mold. I don't see any mold in there, but Penzance, baby. Watch, I'm gonna get somebody that says, oh, that's not the right wrapper. Uh, you're probably smoking something that's very bad for you. It's still moist. 2014, it's been sealed up since then. And let's get that packed in. I'm gonna close this, because this stuff smells amazing and I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> How many people have ruined tobacco by forgetting to close the tins? One of my favorite things about the Briar Cigar is that cap. I told you about the putting it in your pocket thing, but it also works as a tamp. So you can tamp it down and it doesn't really get too tight in there because the threads catch and it won't let you go too far down. Oh, that Penzance smells awesome. So let's do a char light, which is interesting. I've never had a pipe facing that way to do a char light, so let's see. Mm. Oh, Penzance is so good. As far as the draw goes, it smokes like a good drawing pipe. It seems to be staying lit a lot longer than a pipe does. Maybe that's because it has the reverse calabash design. So basically you've got the chamber for tobacco and you've got another cooling chamber back here and it's got a little, I don't know, I'll have to ask Chris what the little chamber, the little middle part is. I, don't know. I love the logo on the back. You probably cannot see it, but it's got little rabbit ears coming out of a top hat, little bowler hat, pretty slick there. Charlight went well, tamped it down again with the cap and let's go with the true light now. So far, I'm really digging this thing. It's 
I like how when you're lighting it, the flame goes up just like you were smoking a real cigar. And you don't have to worry about burning the, the wood there. I really like it a lot. It draws magnificently. It's not really hot. I've always been skeptical about reverse calabash, whether it really cools off because I had a calabash once that didn't really cool off the, the smoke like it says it does. But so far, this smoke feels really, really good. Mm. So would I get one? <laughs> I did. No, but would I buy another one or would I recommend you buy one? Absolutely. freaking lutely This is nice. I can't wait to take this on a trip. And, you know, if I don't have time to smoke the whole bowl or chamber or whatever you call this, or smoke the whole Briar cigar, <laughs> that was horrible. I can just cap it off, put it in my pocket, everything's good. So yeah, absolutely, man. This is a great pipe. Really, really dig it. Or should I even call it a pipe? Should I call it a great cigar, but it's not a cigar. And it sounds cheesy to call it a Briar cigar every time I got it, but. As you can see, I really enjoy this Briar cigar. Even with the white tip, which is supposedly for highfalutin royalty type people. Uh, it smokes really well. I love the fact that the cap is like a tamp. I love the fact that you can cap it and put it in your pocket and not worry about it burning or, or losing anything out of that cigar. But the story, wait, hang on just a second. Somebody's calling. Oh, it's Chris. Ah, he knows I'm making this video, but I need to decline it because I want to finish it and then I'll call him afterwards. So I'll just decline that. So the story behind him making this cigar is awesome. Apparently he was in Key West and he met up with somebody who was, I think it was related to Ernest Hemingway or something like that. And they got to talk about pipes and cigars and he said he wanted to make a pipe that was like a cigar. Wait, 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 wait. That's... <laughs> you didn't even decline the call, man. And that story I... is complete f***ing bullshit. I didn't decline the call? Hey, man. <laughs> that story's not how it went? No, that's not how it went. I've been here the whole time listening to you blabber on about all this nonsense. Oh, fantastic. Um, so, since I was idiotically wrong, would you like to... Tell everybody the real story of how you made the prior cigar. Yeah. All right. All right. Turn the damn phone around so they can see me. Okay. Here you go. Sorry, man. So you you want to tell them right. like the real story of the prior cigar? How it happened? All right. So the real story of the prior cigar, how it happened. I uh, like most things that I make. They're kind of just a joke. And I was uh, playing around in my shop one day and decided, you know, let's see if we can do a small cigar shaped pipe. And uh, in the process, I designed one, showed it on Facebook. A lot of people were really interested in it. Um, but it didn't work at that time. Like, it, it was too narrow. It was, like, you know, the size of, like, a cigarillo. And um, started talking with a few friends of mine, uh, developed a RC chamber, which is stands for reverse catalyst chamber, but it's basically just, a, like, a plenum in, the, uh, in between the airway and stem. And that basically condenses moisture and creates a, a turbulent point so that... Plenum sounds uh, sexual. Is <laughs> it is. It's very sexual. It means open space. Oh. You can use your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then just sort of kind of went there. I mean, we're on like version 7 or 8 or, or whatever it is. But uh, the, main, the main thing is, is that it's at the right size now. Um, over the past, what, five, six years? <laughs> it's, it's important to have it at the right size. <laughs> it is, you gotta have the right size. Not too thick, not too thin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. It's got the perfect plenum. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's a good plenum. Yeah. But, you know, I, uh, I've been dueling with the, uh, the, the U.S. Patent Trademark Office for about five years, and I was finally awarded my patent. Yeah. So I have a patent on the Briar Cigar. Um, it's been available at times in Morda, Briar, uh, Strawberry Wood, Meersham, Olive Wood. So I've had all kinds of different uh, different materials. Nice. Uh, there's been there's been Briar cigars that have been like seven inches long and like an inch and a half diameter. Big big it's suckers that I used to make. It's above average. It's, it's above average. It depends who you talk to. But... <laughs> I, I stopped making those because they were ridiculous, and it's it's a, a tough 
uh, size to find mm-hmm. prior. It isn't cut in that size generally. And that's it. Got the uh, got the patent and got my Euro distribution and Asian distribution and the whole bit. Nice. Well, I screwed up the story royally. Although I think I think the one with Hemingway sounds so much better. But your story was much better than mine. But yours is legit too. So and the patent, man, the patent is awesome. I love that you got the That's patent the cool part. part. Heck yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's funny after fighting with the examiner for so long. I mean, think about it. How how have you? Can you imagine an argument that lasts five years? No. Well, yes, I can. I've been divorced before. Um, okay, so you know, but. <laughs> Five-year argument, and you have to keep going back and fighting it and paying a lawyer to deal with it. Just mm-hmm. yeah. Now that it's done, I'm just. Uh, was I at I'm, least was I at least right with the white tip? That's for like royalty and yeah. stuff. Okay. No, but believe it or not, certain markets prefer certain stems. Nice. It's, it's crazy. I I don't usually release the the colored stems all the time, but mm-hmm. uh, it's generally it's a regional thing. So for a time in China, all they wanted was white, white stems. That's it. Um, and then uh, in Europe, all they wanted is black. Uh, in the U.S., I had a lot of people wanting red. So that, hmm. I can't explain it. It's a really weird thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. That is it's interesting. Well, I mean, at least they're doing well. I know you're selling a ton of them because I've seen people with them. But the nutsack pipe. Oh crap! Hang on, it said low it's battery. Not the nutsack pipe. <laughs> it's not the nutsack pipe. It's not the nutsack pipe. I call it. It looks like a nutsack. But no, that was a th- that was a throwaway that I had to give you some charity when you're down at the shop. Well, it's I guess it's kind of good because never mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably good not to call it the nutsack pipe. Anyways. That, that is a heavily blasted Arbutus throwaway. Heavily, heavily blasted. Heavily our throw away. Well, <laughs> thank you for correcting me. Sorry that I tried to decline your call. You, uh, you, I know you knew I was making this video, so I figured this worked out better. All right, man. Cool. Well, I appreciate it. And everybody, what the f*** is my sign off? <laughs> I haven't done a video in so long. <laughs> Shit. It's uh, go to morganpipes.com, sign up for the newsletter, and uh, buy some stuff. That's right. That's my, that's my sign off for this video. Y'all keep your pipes loaded, philosophize, and enjoy life. I think that's what I say. I like your Morgan Pipes one better.